authorized is really like the authentication, except it's going to be executing the other script, that other script that we're going to bring in in a second. So same thing, there's input, and then you execute that script. And we'll deal with authorization based on roles, who you are, user ID. You'll see how that logic works. OK. Now, a lot of times in a code file, I have the exported API first. I use a, a double equal barrier there. And then I put the unexported API. For, that helps me, actually, I kind of in my brain. Um, know what we're doing in terms of, actually, you know what I might do? Let me bring all this in so we can review it. But maybe I'll add that function back. And I'll just leave it empty until we can um, uh, get to it. Okay. I'll leave it empty. I'll make sure that it never returns an error right now so we can get back to it, right? Okay, public key lookup. This was the unexported function. A couple interesting things here. Um, I rarely do this, but I did this like this because I wanted to just make the, the, the lock and the unlock a little simpler. So I'm defining a literal function. I'm executing it right away. And what it's doing is a cache lookup for the PEM file, I mean, for the, for the PEM key. Um, and if it finds it, we get it back. If not, there's an error, and I can check that error. So I'm just doing it so I can keep this sort of super clean. So kind of cool, right? These are little things you can do, and it keeps everything in line instead of it being a named function. Then if we get it, um, we can do the public key, now we're calling the, so if we get it, we're done, we return it. This is saying if there's no error, return what was cached. Um, if it wasn't there, then we'll make the quote unquote network call, and then we'll store it into the cache. So just a little private or unexported function that handles the, the caching for us. Here's the OPA policy evaluation, you already saw me steal this, so we don't have to go into detail there. And at this point, what we're gonna do is always return nil. So the user's always enable. Okay, so that's our core API here. Now, still bugging out because we have some more things here that we have to add. Let's um, go down this list here. Let's look at rules for a second. Let's do this next one. Rules. All right. The rules is a small file. It's all really related to the OPA. I call these rules. So you can see here that I'm defining different rules that we can execute inside the o, um, Rego scripts. You can see I've got the namespace, and then you can see I've got the embedding. So let's add that now too. Get our Rego folder. You already saw the authentication. Let's bring that in again. You saw that. The authorization is going to look a little different. We'll review it to the best of my ability, even though I wrote it. At the top, under default, do you see all the different rules that I'm defining? See that? Rule any, admin only, user only, admin or subject. So that's what that's mapping. This is mapping to, to this. Then I assign some variables one that represents the user string, one that represents an admin string, and one that represents both. And then I implement the logic for each rule, all right? So if you're any, this sort of logic does that sort of, um, so it feels bitwise, right? 
where it's just comparing everything and letting you know did, did how many things matched. So did we get greater than zero? Did we get greater than zero? Did we get greater than zero? Admin or subject, what it does is it says, see if you can match if they're an admin. If they're an admin, pass. But if they're not an admin, then they have to pass on the fact that this user is allowed to do that. So it's one of these like, if that's not true on the top, if they're not an admin, then here's a second way that they can um, validate. In every case though, I'm doing some form of a compare and seeing how many match. In my case, I just want it to be greater than zero. And I can have a lot of different rules in here. And I can choose the one that I want based on the, the level of authorization that I need. Okay, pretty cool, right? We've got that. So our rules are there. Now, I do know, let me close this file. It was just not reading it. Let's double check that I spelled, even though I copied it so I wouldn't have an issue. Authorization, authentic, my only guess will be reload window. All right. Well, now I just got to reload the window. Okay, so we now have our rules. We've got a big part of our API. There's two more files here that I want to talk about. One is errors. Hmm, errors. So actually, there are four sorts of errors, error signals um, in this system, isn't there? I sort of missed this one, didn't I? when we were talking about errors yesterday, because I only talked about trusted, I talked about shutdown, I talked about field validation, but yeah, there's auth errors too. So let's take a look at what we've done here. This is the same pattern, right? Auth error, though this time we've made it exported. We can construct it on one line. Here's the implementation of the error interface, and there's the is. Now, I'd be curious to know if that needs to be exported. Remember one of the rules that I said yesterday is that it's, these are better to be unexported and we can use the API? So let's see what happens in our project. If I make this Does anything go, nothing goes red, does it? So for sure, I'm not um, having anybody, or at least the code isn't doing any sort of type assertions, right? So it is much better for this to be unexported. And I'm gonna change our pro the, the main project. I'm gonna commit this later. These are the little things you find over time because over time the big stuff gets done and you start going through the code again and you're like, hey, I'm violating a rule there. That really would be best served if it's unexported. And then the compiler is so fast that we can make a change and see where it affects the code base. Okay, so we've got our new error, hand, a new error signal. There is another file here called context.go. And you can imagine that since this stuff is being processed in middleware, that we're gonna to wanna to leverage context to get this back to the handler, uh, potentially, at least the claims. Since the middleware is gonna be extracting the claims, we need to get the claim information back to the middle, uh, back to the handlers if it needs it. Now, again, claims should only be processed at the application layer. I don't want to see you passing any claims into the, into the business layer core APIs because this is web authentication authorization, not business. A CLI tool wouldn't know what to do with claims. So this could be in the context. And again, if we're doing special processing with claims in the handler, I'm not saying we can't. I'm saying we've now hard-coded stuff that we wouldn't be able to dynamically fix or swap out. So anytime I see somebody working with claims in the handler, I would just wanna ask ourselves, can we do it, you know, maybe in the middleware? What's preventing us 
from doing this in middleware and making that more dynamic with Rego as opposed to GoLogic. Now, this is the structure you saw, except in this case, I have a second, a second um, key because at some point, um, you're gonna see here, we're gonna be able to extract the subject, right, or the user ID from the claims, and you'll be able to pull that out. We already put that into the claims. Um, if you remember, where do we put the claims? Here. So in the claims, in the registry claims, we're gonna have the subject. The subject eventually will be a UUID, and we'll wanna store that information. So I'm gonna leave that there. But you can see here, we'll be able to store this information in the context, um, and at least that will be available to the app layer. Okay, so minus the test, which we will talk about very soon, we now have an auth package. I'm gonna commit this up to you now. I feel pretty confident that if you now review that code on your own, you understand, I have a mental model of everything that's in there and why it's in there. That's the important part. 